are at 6.15, and um, we have posted the agenda in three public places, right, and on the website, and emailed interested parties so we can go ahead and legally conduct this meeting. So to start out, we'll ask if anyone has any additions to the agenda tonight that, that was on there. Mason, you do? Uh, yes. Um, U.S. Forest Service uh, potential new policy. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? <clears throat> Something to? Just much cooler. You know, huh? The cones that were on the around the Jersey barriers on Bingo Road. Mm -hmm. I just happened to look out my window and saw them going up by my house, two or three of them on top of a car and a couple on the hood. Hmm. And they went back down now, and uh, no cones. And then they came back up in about 50 miles an hour, and I couldn't get in the house quick enough to get my AR, but I got them slowed down a little bit anyway. And uh, so that's where the cones are. It's a blue sedan with a bunch of two little punks in it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all your cones, all right, got a feeling up where they are somewhere, or over the bay up there, so. All right. <coughs> that the no license plate, just a I, blue sedan. No, I was, yeah. you know. No, Cooter, I don't know if Cooter's going to make it in tonight or not. I don't think so. But um, anybody else? Um, yeah, if, if I could just... Well, I just said now, now is when we make additions to the agenda. Then we can go on and talk about it. So, sure, yeah. You're welcome to it. Um, update for Rochester. Okay, so update, okay. yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks. All right, so then we've got those. We've got the <coughs> meetings from uh, the minutes from the last meeting on August 12th. And the only um, correction I saw that um, in the discussion of the tax rate and the school tax rate, um, it didn't, there was a request to um, waive the penalties and interest for the, or that was a discussion of waiving the penalty and interest, and we decided that we'd, since there's no penalty until after the, the fourth payment, that there was no sense in, in waiving it. It was really not a big deal, so we should probably include that. And then I'd move to approve the minutes with that correction. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Um, okay. <clears throat> and then, so Harlan, you already kind of gave us an explanation of of that. So we'll um, we'll go with that. I guess um, keep an eye out for maybe Cooter. Maybe Cooter. Talk with who? Yeah. Who? Who are you? Talk with Whoever who? is driving the blue sedan, I guess. Yeah. You, you, know, you don't know where they where they came from, though. No, uh, I get to my house. That's far enough for me. Yeah. Yep. I don't know where they are, but they're up in there. So I saw them. We went back up in this afternoon and they come out. So I assume they came from there. So. Nice. That would be uh, Mike Clean Smith. All right. Um, Forest Service. <coughs> So that would segue right into the Forest Service issues. And Mason, you want to um, talk about their proposed new policy? I, I understand today was the final day for public comment on that. Is that right? I, uh, 25th, yeah. 25th. That was. Um, 26th. Today's 26th, yeah. Okay, yesterday was it, yeah. I just was curious what the select board uh, was this the first time? That you heard about this through the newspaper? Or yeah, were you notified, I didn't. Did you guys hear about that at all? No. No. Uh, I read it in the paper. Yeah. Any? I heard it on the radio. You like heard it on the radio. Before, yeah. so, so our relationship with the Forest Service was one that, as a town, we heard it through the news, not through. Right. I the think Forest that. Um, coming to you to say we're going to potentially have a new policy. Right. I I don't know how. Recently, the local Forest Service even heard about this. 
but I don't know. We haven't had a conversation with them about that. No. And you all three have read the news accounts? I've not in detail, but yeah, I have the general okay. gist you know, of it. Yeah. Any one of you had any opinions as leadership in our town or related to it, as such a what your concerns might be or could, um, could you tell us what this is about? Because I swear I have not read about this. Oh, you haven't heard about, about this? I know. I'm sorry. I, I copy it and I deal with other things in the front page. I haven't gotten all that. Can you share with us? Yeah, tell us what this is about. Uh, no. It may be better for them to share it with you since they, you know. In a nutshell, well, what it is is uh, the Forest Service is discontinuing public input to any of their projects, basically. Do you think you agree with that? No, I don't. Not even, no. Do they agree? Is that what that's? I think that's yeah, what. Right? That's basically, in a nutshell, like you said. Yeah. But I think it's yeah. probably the largest landowner in, in it is. Manchester. It is the largest it landowner. Nice to have some kind of relationship with them, so they're not pulling this kind of stuff, you know. Yeah. And I called the. I, I, Todd wanted to talk to Chris Patrick, but I couldn't get through. I left a message, told him oh, I was against it. Mm -hmm. And to get my name on the list. Yeah. Well, that, of course, I'm pretty much against everything. But that in particular. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, well, I'm well, speaking for myself. That could have a large um, effect. Yeah, it could have a large effect. I was uh, surprised that we didn't get any official, um, you know, reach out to the town, actually. You know, you hear it in the news on the radio. Well, I would appreciate if it would be on next uh, select board's agenda with a follow-up from from the select board. Well, I guess we could follow. I guess we don't know how quickly they're going to make their decision. They, I don't think it's. Well, it's, it's not happened. about the decision. Yeah. It's yeah. about communications. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for you to communicate and share with us as the representatives of this democracy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if transparency is the issue here. Did you say monarchy? No, well, no. Well, it's your great democracy. <laughs> well, I'm a lot. we could do that. So does this mean you're planning to invite them to come to a meeting to talk about it, or? Um, if they have enough to, to say, we could, um, could do that, or as what you've requested was for uh, us to report on a conversation with them. You know, I, um, and I think this is not something that that originated in the, our local office here. Yeah. So you're going to co consult with the ranger this weekend and report back. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was surprised to hear it, but well, surprised but not surprised, mm -hmm. seeing as the way a lot of. Um, rules are being tweaked lately in the political world. Um, all right. No, that's a good point. It's worth um, making a fuss about. Harlan, thanks for being another person to call up and register your opinion. I guess, um, I don't know. I don't either, but, it, but you got to try, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So um, that segues right into the future of Rochester, doesn't it? And uh, in, in the uh, Envision Rochester um, movement. So would you like to to give us a little update uh, on sure. what's going on? Yeah. Sure. Um, if I haven't met you yet, my name's Rachel Cunningham, and there's a, a lot of momentum happening in town and in the hollows and up and down the valley of um, people sharing ideas and resources and uh, concerns and also ideas for opportunities. Um, and we've been um, very lucky uh, that the select board, uh, I think it was Pat in particular, uh, gave us the okay to attend the, the recent uh, leadership summit over in Randolph. So we wanted to thank the board, um, all of you, for that because it was a tremendous uh, summit. It was hosted by the Vermont Council on Rural Development. And that's a nonpartisan um, organization that is really interested in what we're doing here in Rochester. Very supportive. And they've um, encouraged us to come to the select board. We will do formally at the last, the, the, at the next meeting. Um, they've encouraged us, they've asked us to come to the select board to uh, 
uh, for two things. One, uh, official endorsement, if, if you're comfortable doing that, for Envision Rochester and the outcomes of the community facilitation process. And then also, if we could, if the select board uh, would officially request um, a partnership with the Vermont Council on Rural Development. And uh, we, can, we can give you uh, uh, information about that before the next select board meeting so you guys can really sit with it and have a think about it. So there's no decision required here. This was just uh, tonight I thought I'd come just to uh, give you a heads up about um, some of the momentum since last spring. Um, at the last meeting alone, we had 22 people sign up to volunteer on um, different uh, teams and uh, business owners, young people, older folks, retirees. And we've had a series. I think, Tony, you were at our first one at the library. And we've had four now. And we've had lots of new faces at each meeting. So the word's getting out. People are interested. Um, they're, they're, they're eager for, for uh, sort of a unified approach. Our goal is to support the town select board and the town plan for the future. So we're looking forward to reading the final draft and seeing where we can, you know, uh, give public input when that's appropriate. So we're, we're looking forward to reading that. And that was actually one of my questions for tonight on behalf of our group, but also my neighbors. Um, it, will there be like hard copies available or mailed out to people if they're not? On there will the be. Um, there is. Yeah, I think. There is already yeah. in the town. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and, and I think at a, a request could get an email of the. Um, okay. Yeah, of the but current. It's it's yeah. not it's not quite. Um, ready. Yet, it's right? not quite ready yet. Yeah. 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 It's copy specifically of what? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, the, the town, town the plan. new town plan. That's, yeah. That's being updated. Yeah, that's being updated. Yeah. Which so they will be available to the county. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Hazard mitigation. No, that's different. Just a regular town plan. Yeah, just our basic. Yeah, you have copies of it. Over I mean, here some now. people, you know, you have copies. PDF would be wonderful too. Yeah, it's very thick. It's very thick, and not everyone's interested in printing that or has access to the internet. So, initially, you said when you went, you went to the meeting, you said they were interested in what we are doing in Rochester. Can you elaborate on sure, who yeah. they are and exactly what, what are they interested in, what we're doing? Sure, sure. Okay, so um, the steering committee of Envision uh, Rochester invited Jenna Kowalski to come, and that was uh, two and a half weeks ago now. And we gave her an update on, on, on what our group and the community has been doing, uh, sharing ideas, uh, business people uh, thinking about their plan, their strategy based on some of the new tax information and um, opportunities that are really bubbling up from the town plan revisions because we're sort of opening things up in a new way. Um, it, 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 you know, looking at things a little bit differently. So she, she was interested in finding out exactly what are some of the results that came from our community gatherings. So we share them with her. Mm -hmm. um, we can, again, we can give that in detail to you before next uh, select board meetings mm -hmm. um, for, the, you know, for your record. Um, and then there's a whole community facilitation process that this organization works on, along with other consultants, TROC in their own way. But this group in particular um, has been working very closely with South Royalton, Randolph, um, our neighbors mm -hmm. in, in the valley. So this group is very interested in doing um, a modified version with us because we have already jumped through several hoops in, in getting the community motivated, talking, networking, really putting our thinking caps on. And so that's, it. That moving that first heavy ball, that's half the battle. So a lot of communities really have, have are, are behind the eight ball on that. Okay. But we're, we're ahead of the curve on this. Okay. Because we started this earlier in the spring. And mm -hmm. So they're pretty excited about some of the things we've already been able to achieve. Okay. We're having folks talk to each other who really never knew each other before or haven't felt comfortable talking about certain things, you know? Um, so it's, uh, it's been a good process so far. You know, there, there's some folks who, who, who may not necessarily buy into that community facilitation process. Uh, but for the most part, 
we've gotten terrific feedback from, from people, and there's some actually in the room we've been there, so. Mm -hmm. Martha, you had a question? Yeah, I just have a question. I somehow, when I was, I just realized in my notes, I don't have the name of the organization that had that summit in New York. It's, it's the Vermont Council on, on Rural Development. So the, uh, okay. the, the um, you're welcome. Um, Senator Leahy opened it, and uh, the governor closed it. And it was, uh, it was a terrific day. Um, a lot of workshops, um, really good hands-on community development um, programming. So thank you, uh, Julie, <coughs> and particularly Pat, for giving a thumbs up for that, because we were represented. Good. Yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of our, our new partners were there. Arnold Block, um, the folks out of Bethel, and some other familiar faces that we've been working with, uh, you know, through the steering committee. Good. Um, so, so, I mean, there's more things that I can give you in details, but I'm sure these folks might get the heck home eventually. <laughs> But, I, I but it sounds like we will have stuff on the agenda yeah. and at the next meeting to um, talk yeah. a little bit more about that. And maybe That's some. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, any questions? Oh. Joan, how are you uh, envisioning Rochester tonight? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a new road? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that's mainly what my updates are. Pat, chime in if you'd like to, uh, mm -hmm. there's anything I'm missing. Pat and I have been attending the weekly construction meetings that take place Monday mornings to sort of catch up on what's happening, talking about change orders and um, how the project's going and getting into the nitty gritty details of getting uh, the project going or keep it going. As of this morning, the project uh, was considered to be on schedule. Um, some of the highlights are, I think it was eight culverts that have been installed so far, so far, who you remember? Had 21. Two more are being started today. Um, there's something more than a dozen that are going in along that stretch of the road, so they're uh, oh. getting further along there. Um, uh, several of the major geotechnical sites, and the geotechnical sites refer to the areas where there's drainage and erosion control structures going in on both sides of the road, on the upside, uphill side, as well as the downhill side. So if you walk up the road at all, when construction is not going on, you see these big stone areas and things that are being dug out. These are the, what they're calling geotechnical areas. Um, that's where um, it's sort of the heavy duty work construction that has been going on. Um, several of those are finished, and uh, both on the uphill and the downhill sides, and um, if you walk up there, you'll also see that there are a lot of um, concrete poured in place um, culvert, both inlets where the water comes in on the uphill side, and on the downhill side, they're called head walls, where the water is coming out from the downhill side. Um, and originally, there was going to be a combination of uh, a lot of cast in place and freeform concrete, but because of the slope and other conditions there that made it kind of difficult to do, uh, precast, they're all doing casting place. So um, those are moving ahead as well. Um, the bottom line in terms of the schedule is that uh, definitely by the end of this week they'll all be on schedule. So work so far is doing well for looking towards a mid-October completion. You know, lots of things can still happen. Um, they're predicting that by September 13th all of the downhill and the uphill drainage structures, those geotechnical sites, will be completed. Um, um, so that's that's a great deal still to be done, but they seem to be co pretty confident as of this morning that, that that is possible to do. They continue to encounter unexpected conditions on the downhill side, um, more slides than they expected. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the topography is even steeper than what was originally thought partially because it wasn't all fully um, surveyed by the um, Du Bois and King crew, and so sometimes you just have to go out there and stand on it, look up at the slope and realize, uh, the slope's about like that, so maybe it's a little too steep to have mm -hmm. a drainage structure go there, so they have to sort of do some resurveying in the field and reset the stakes and figure out how to direct the water downhill so it's, that doesn't become a fire hose. Um, so that's all what happens on a day-to-day -day basis over there. Um, in addition, they're 
encountering, because of the steeper topography, they're finding places where there's more erosion and downslope than than the lake thought. So they're making adaptations in the plans and uh, the designs to, to uh, deal with that. And also, in some places, there's more ledge than anticipated. And there was top possibility of whether blasting would be necessary right now they're relying on drilling to the rock mm. to break it off in pieces. And uh, major change order um, having to do with what we've been calling Site 2, which is Upper Bethel Mountain Road. Um, there's been a lot of discussion back and forth flying around between all the agencies and the uh, Du Bois and King and the contractor about how to deal with the work that's required above the current project site, you know, where the uh, Jersey barriers are up by um, up the end of the project area. And as of this morning, what's been agreed between all the parties, meaning Tatro and the town, and uh, Municipal Assistance Board and the Trans District 4 is that um, they're going to incorporate a portion of the upper part of Bethel Mountain Road into Tatro's contract with a change order. And so that's going to move Tatro's um, contracting responsibilities up to where the T intersection is, where Bethel Mountain Road turns to the right and middle of the road heads out. We're, for lack of a better term, we're calling that Site 1B. And Tatro will take care of that. It, it consists mostly of stone line ditching and some paving repair and shoulder work. Um, and they still feel that they can do that, complete that um, on the same, by, on the same uh, time schedule. The part from the T intersection on Bethel Mountain Road out to <clears throat> uh, the town line, not clear that there's work as far out as the town line, but whatever there is due uh, to be done, um, District 4 is going to work with the MAB to get that done, also within the same time frame. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth about what the scope needs to be there, and what they've decided is in order to be able to get it done in time so that the town can get the maximum reimbursement from the feds um, and to have it done by winter, is they're going to scale it back instead. Uh, um, and the scaling back consists mostly of, instead of doing the uh, cross culverts that are needed, they're just going to button it up for the winter, basically, and work strictly within the town right of way, because another way of uh, extending the length of time the project takes is to go beyond the town right of way onto private property. And then you've got to deal with all the private ownerships there, get their cooperation to allow that to happen. There has to be a lot of surveying done, there has to be documents prepared, um, easements signed, that sort of thing. So we're going to leave that for next year under a different regime. So what they'll do this year is focus on this down, the uh, stone line ditching and whatever paving is done and shoulder work. And that'll make it safe for travel uh, through winter. And then it's either this October, when the next round of Better Roads uh, grants come out, and that's a state program, mm -hmm. or else there's the Class 2 uh, Municipal Road Program, which is in April. Either one of those, the town is encouraged and we will be applying for a grant to complete the work that's needed up there next year, which would be the cross culverts and any other sort of cleanup work that might still be needed. And the yeah, MAB assured us, we've, we've been very successful in getting those grants for the past few years, but the MAB sort of made a special point of saying we will make sure you get funded mm -hmm. so that we can finish that work. Yeah. And it will be a lot easier because even if we have to do work outside of the town right away to do that stuff, um, doing it under the state uh, rules for working outside of right away are a lot easier to deal with than the federal uh, methods. So I think that's a really good solution to that, for that what was a problem about how they're going to do that. The other part of that is the process that they follow is called an IDIQ which stands for, I have, right, I have to keep writing it down because I forget. It is indefinite delivery and indefinite quantity, which means instead of doing a very detailed form of, is this more you want to know? Mm -hmm. No, that's all right. <laughs> I, didn't much have I like this IDIQ, I'm going to use uh, that. I think it's all yeah. interesting. So anyway, an IDIQ means that instead of having to do a very detailed kind of bid process where you break out all of the different materials and all the different steps involved, 
um, the state will just invite uh, pre-qualified bidders to bid on it, and they can then provide uh, a bid that's just a lump sum amount. Because these are companies that have worked extensively on DTRANS projects in the past, so that they're sort of known quantity in terms of what their qualifications are um, and their ability to get the job done um, on budget and on time. So they will take care of all the bidding process. They will deal with this limited subset of contractors in the state and sign them up and get them to work right away. So we'll hear more about that in the next couple of weeks as they move ahead with those plans. Um, and they'll be able to use the plans that Du Bois and King has already prepared. Uh, they'll be scaled back somewhat, but essentially um, they don't have to start from zero in terms of the design. Um, so that's um, the highlights of Bethel Mountain Road. Um, uh, water quality work at, uh, project at the town garage mm -hmm. is moving ahead. I think I sent you an email already, just yeah. reminding you at the next select board meeting on September 9th, uh, someone from White River Partnership will come and give you a little bit of technical information on what's going to be happening at the town garage. Our consultants, the watershed, uh, watershed consulting associates who we met, that some of you met earlier, are doing the final designs that are probably going to be done this week. And um, the main thing that's going to happen there is something called a swirl, uh, swirl separator. And that's an in-ground piece of equipment that will take a lot of the uh, stormwater runoff and it separates out all the silts and sediments and stuff like that that you want to keep out of the river. And it'll accumulate in the separator and allow then the water to flow through, um, <coughs> infiltrate through the ground and go out eventually, ending up in the river in a much cleaner condition than it is now. Um, so that is called a defender, in case you want to. A defender. Do and they have any idea about how often that will need to be cleaned out? Um, every few years. Every few years. And we'll have the spec on that when the time comes. Um, and they, uh, they, have, they have methods, recommended methods for how to do that. It's essentially some kind of a, a vacuum system that the town will have to invest yeah. in. About $1,200. Uh -huh. And we might be able to get a grant for that um, to keep that thing clean because otherwise, over time, obviously, it's going to fill up with silks and sand and stuff. And so we did have a site visit there. It's going on a few weeks ago with White River Partnership and with the consultant. <coughs> and Cooter was there as well. So we talked a lot about other things that would be done uh, at the surface to redirect the stormwater as well. We had a lot of discussion about what to do with the salt shed. and. That's not fully resolved yet, um, or the salt storage, rather. Um, and that just might have to be a, a, a separate design exercise and a separate project. Uh, yes, a separate project, because it's kind of a head scratcher at the moment. What to do, where to put it, how to design it in a way that we can limit the amount of seepage that goes into the river right now. Um, there will. Uh, Cooter had the option of having his crew do it. It's about a two-week uh, process of just one person really on an excavator. Um, and he decided um, to bid it out instead. So um, White River Partnership will work with, with, uh, with us on that. In fact, they're going to put together the bid package. It's pretty simple. It'll be in the Herald next week. And uh, hopefully we'll be ready to do the project in mid-October. Um, so that's pretty much it. And then only the last thing I want to mention is the 23 or 24 or is it 22 or so FEMA projects that we have. We sort of, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but Julie and Becky and Cooter and myself are all working, taking care of various ta tasks associated with that, putting together. There's a lot of information that has to be assembled on how much work has been done, um, what it's costed us to date, what percentage of completion it is on these projects, what projects still need to be bid out over what period of time, what's the description and work to be done at each one of these sites. And there is a meeting coming up um, on Wednesday. It's the next kind of second meeting in, in person with someone from FEMA to go through the spreadsheet that we've all been working on. So that's a work in progress. Is that all? 
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's um moving forward. That's great. Set. Any um special news from the library? Well, let's see. Tomorrow, Gail Clausen will be doing a workshop on hand lettering mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock in the morning. And Thursday, Howard Coffin will be talking about the summer of 1816, that wasn't a summer. It's all the year without a summer, really, is what it will be. Uh, and Amy Broad will do a, a writing workshop on Saturday. Our next trustees meeting is earlier than usual. It will be September 3rd. We moved it up a week. And you can get all of this information in the Herald and all the bulletin boards. So there's more to come about. What time does the Howard Coffin? Seven. At seven? seven? Yes. It's the meeting program. Yeah. Fortunately, it's at the same time as the hazard mitigation meeting, which I agree. So uh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's the hazard of too many meetings. I know. Yeah. Mitigate yeah. <laughs> that somehow. Yes, we can mitigate that. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you. Um, He's a very interesting guy. If you bring that yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Um, Terry is not in tonight, so we're. Um, Moving right along, I guess the new business, we really covered most of the new businesses in Bethel Mountain Road and the upcoming um, the informational meetings. And really, um, do you guys have anything else that you wanted to chat about, ask about? Pat, Joan did enough of a summary on Bethel Mountain Road. Yeah. Um, for anybody in the, the town that's concerned about truck traffic, <coughs> The project has six weeks left, but the trucks are estimated to only need about three or four more of those weeks to continue roll. So we may get a reprieve of two weeks earlier for the trucks. So we're going to bring any piece of good news that we can. I love Aaron. <laughs> yeah, progress. that doesn't seem progress. I don't progress. like the trucks to see impact driver that's driving me crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't have to go tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And the um, under Alden business is just this um, broken record of the missing book, which I don't have any updates about it. Has so anybody looked since last time I was here? Is anybody so in you know, here? I'm cleaning, cleaning, out, cleaning out lots of different areas, looking as I'm cleaning. So. There you go. <laughs> and there you have it. 47 minutes? No, no, 30, 30, 32 minutes. That's not bad. Oh, wait, Dick. One thing. Yes. The tree is gone. I saw it. Thank you. Yeah, I saw you. Uh, it's sticking out of the back of your truck. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Talking about the maple tree on the park. Right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, was, that was pretty bad. It was yeah. worse off than the top. Yeah. Can yeah. okay. I ask a question? Yes. Since uh, I'm a new tax payer, yep. um, can you? Can you explain to me the recent article in the Herald about the potential of a 10% tax, property tax increase, because of the reduced amount of children at the school? That was last week. Has um, that changed since last week? Or it didn't seem definitive in the article, so I was very confused. We have not got any updates on that. Basically, what it is is there was I guess the supervisor union modified the student count for unknown reasons. Their, you know, their own formula. Their own formula, and then that was um, what they communicated to the town to use for the tax rate was not what the town of Rochester or Stockbridge had voted on, not what we understood from our numbers. And there's. Um, and there are, it's been brought up, and I'm anticipating that they're going to revert. revert. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So Martha, do you have an update I'm on that? I was going to say, I got um, minutes sent to me from the last RSUD, Rochester Stockbridge Unified District School meeting, mm -hmm. which was held several weeks ago, actually. 
Uh, but the minutes stated they were they discussed that for quite a bit, and the minutes there was nothing super definitive in it. Mm -hmm. Carl Grobe, Grobe, the head of the school board, right. has been um, working with the state, obviously trying to get things ironed out. And it's looking. It said he it, he said it was looking like there was going to be it was going to be lowered, but he didn't have anything definite yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry, that mm -hmm. was kind of like no news. Okay, but well they're working on it. Okay, so so we do have a penalty. That's being affixed to the to they the appealed? computation they error the penalty. or uh, I don't know about they the appealed the pen penalty, but I don't know what the result of that. Okay. It's still all being hashed out. Okay. Yeah. All right. The guy's on vacation. Totally. No, somebody's on vacation. Yeah, the guy that made the determination, he made that determination and then went on vacation, I guess, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, everyone's kind of interested to see how that shakes out because it's like, yeah. It was a tiny article, but boy. Yeah, tiny article, but big, great job. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, unless anyone else has anything else you want to say, we're going to um, call this meeting done. Thank you all for coming out. Happy summer.